Welcome to an introduction to quantitative comparison questions. In this lesson, we'll examine the structure of this unique question type and the four answer choices that always accompany the questions. Now, when you write the GRE, the first seven to nine questions in each math section will be quantitative comparison questions. Given this, it's crucial that you become adept at solving this question type efficiently and correctly. Now you'll soon find that quantitative comparison questions typically take less time to answer than other math questions. So you should allot approximately one and a quarter to one and a half minutes for each question. Okay, let's take a closer look at these questions. To begin, each question consists of two quantities, quantity A and quantity B. Your job is to compare the two quantities and choose answer choice A if quantity A is greater than quantity B, Answer choice B if quantity B is greater than quantity A. Answer choice C if the two quantities are equal. And answer choice D if there's not enough information to determine the relationship between the two quantities. Now it's important to note that these answer choices are the same for each and every quantitative comparison question on the test. I should also mention that on the day of your test, you will have four radio buttons and you must select one of them for each question. You will find, however, that most GRE resources label these options from A to D in order to refer to each of them. Okay, let's try a few questions so that we can get acquainted with the answer choices. The first one is pretty straightforward. When we evaluate quantity A, we get 21, and when we evaluate quantity B, we get 24. Since quantity B is definitely greater than quantity A, the correct answer here is B. Here's another one. For this one, when we evaluate quantity A, we get 49, and when we evaluate quantity B, we get 49 as well. Since the two quantities have equal value, the correct answer here is C. Here's another one. As you can see, this question contains additional information about the heights of Kyla and Glenn. Any information that appears in this location is shared information that can be applied to both quantities. So here we're comparing Kyla's height with 68 inches. To solve this question, we should first recognize that if Kyla were 70 inches tall, then Glenn would also be 70 inches tall, since their heights must add to 140 inches. In this scenario, Kyla and Glenn would be the same height. However, since we're told that Kyla is taller than Glenn, it must be the case that Kyla is taller than 70 inches. Now we still don't know exactly how tall Kyla is, but that doesn't matter because we now have enough information to compare quantity A and quantity B. If Kyla is taller than 70 inches, then her height must be greater than 68 inches. As such, quantity A must be greater than quantity B, which means the correct answer here is A. Okay, one last example. Here we're given some information about X. We're told that x squared equals 25. Given this information, there are two possible values for x. x could equal 5, in which case quantity a is greater than quantity b. Or it could be the case that x equals negative 5, in which case quantity b is greater than quantity a. Since it's impossible to determine which quantity is greater here, the correct answer is d. Okay, that concludes our introduction to quantitative comparison questions. Let's summarize. In this lesson, we examined quantitative comparison questions and the four answer choices that always accompany these questions. In upcoming lessons, we'll examine a variety of strategies for handling this unique question type. 